Hey guys, it's Miki Samar here, and today I'm going to be reading A Kageyama Topia Lexisner. This one is titled Fall of Rain, and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get right on into the video. This is an AU, so it's like a different, they're not doing volleyball in this, just to say. And now, without further ado, let's get right on into the video. He felt intoxicated. The musky miasma of smoke from the blast and of gunfire completely overwhelmed every single system in his aching body. His head rapidly swirled with pain, throbbing relentlessly against his temples, refusing to let him take sense of his current situation. The ebony locks of his hair were plastered against his forehead. The sticky fluid composed of sweat and blood trailed down his placid cheeks. He felt like a weight had been dropped unsparingly onto his chest, and his breaths became slow and ragged. The boy's indigo hues flitted around, wearily drinking in the chaotic senses of violence. From his dim, secluded vantage point, he knew he was safe, tucked under some debris from the explosions. He knew that he had little time before the guard would strike on again. He was an egocentric genius that worked around his own accords, despite how outrageous it seemed in a rebellion. But there was this obscure girl who always seemed to appear by his side whenever his life was at risk. Yen was what she called herself. She acted without thinking. The only thing that could possibly have been in her mind was to keep Kageyama safe from death's slithering reach. What exactly had happened? He had felt a nauseating wave as he painstakingly attempted to recollect the remnants of his memory that had erupted or that the eruption had occurred. The young male squeezed his eyes shut, hoping to recall the hazy event. He was audaciously standing atop the barricade, poignant and erect. It was the barricade that was validant of the people of his republic that he had built with everything they could touch within an arm's reach. The din of English cries and pelting of bullets were echoing throughout the streets, streaming in every direction. The ominous tumbling of the abysmal thunderclouds bellowed from above as if it were signaling the start of a dreary battle. An erupt sound was, or of yelling caught Kageyama off guard. He snapped his neck to the right, where he could make out the shadows of soldiers rushing in, one, each one supplied with his own firearm. A small, saturated adolescent boy with bright, fiery hair, who Kageyama remembered as Hinata, shouted desperately at him to get back down to safety back down to bloody hell with that cowardly thought. He tore a flag from a nearby balcony rail, bearing the proud colors of his republic, orange and black. After draping the cloth around his broad shoulders, he then proceeded to tie a hasty knot to secure his new cape. Kageyama Tobio felt like he were a king, defending his dying kingdom. The sergeant of the, armor, of the army in front of him, Mel Meticulous, meticulously scaled, of, scaled the barricade, and Kap Kageyama waited patiently for him, as if he was waiting for death. He studied his counterpart as he saw that large, chocolate and youthful eyes. Wait, what? As he saw the young sergeant, could have not been one. What? Sorry. And saw that he had large. He studied his counterpart and saw that he had large, chocolate eyes and youthful, overly cheerful face. The young sergeant could have not been two years older than Kageyama himself. What's a boy like that doing here, protecting your pathetic barricade? He sneered with a smug attitude, earning some hollers from his comrades from below. Shut up and finish him off, Waikawa. The boy who had, or the boy who growled from down below was yet another youth with a brave soul wearing a sour face expression. I'd rather not, or it's rather rich to say something like that coming from you, Kageyama replied coldly, his tone releasing modest amounts of venom. Oikawa scowled, shedding his happy, blazy persona, or blasé persona, revealing his vicious, in vicious interior. Bastard, he muttered, raising his rifle to point at Kageyama's chest. Any last words before I blow this thing damn off you? What? That made no sense. Sorry. Any last word before I blow this damn thing? 
Kagiyama's azure orbs glinted dangerously as they narrowed the soldier in front of him. He held out his only means of defense, his only weapon, a pistol over the edge of the barricade. He modified his fingers and released a gun, allowing it to skid down the barricade, spiraling its way to the feet of the guard. The flag on his back billowed gallantly from, be from behind him, preparing itself, preparing itself for the bitter taste of his blood. Long live the Republic. He was more than ready to accept his destiny. He was more than ready to die with honor. But the destined bullet never reached his heart. Amidst the blur of things, he saw a pale hand clamp over the musket as it blew. The gaunt figure forcibly shoved behind them as he helplessly fell off the barricade. As he plummeted to the ground, he saw the bullet exit the person's body out of their back as he stumbled on the barricade. That stranger saved him. Kageyama tried to rise, but sank back down onto the wooden floor, groaning. He gripped the side of his leg and of he gripped the side of the leg of a collapsed table for support and heaved his body up, which was shaking with exhaustion. For a moment he leaned against the table, trying to regain his strength. Tobiotron? The sound of his name interrupted his peace and he opened his eyes, surveying the premises. Tobio. He vaguely recognized that soft, effeminate voice, which seemed to be sounding beside him. Wyan, He called out, his voice hoarse from the smoke that had been seeping into his lungs. To your right, she said. Um, uh, Paroxymus, sorry me, I, I don't know what that says, of haggard coughing following. Weary eyes rapidly began searching the premises until it found his objective. There she was, the deranged girl. Wyan was clad in rain-soaked rags, resting precariously against the debris from the explosion. She clutched her side, her fingers blanketed in blood. blood. Tovio-chan, she breathed out, a charming smile gracing her lips. You came. I did, Wyan. He slumped down to his knees delicately cradling the shivering girl. He could feel her heartbeats begin to fade, little by little. The warmth and earthly musk of the boy's slim build seemed to comfort the girl, as her visage remained peaceful and serene. Her hand, laden with rit ribbons of rich crimson blood, reached to cup his tear-ridden cheek. That's all I need then, really. Her energy was diminishing, and her hand had been tenderly placed onto Kageyama's cheek, had slid down. She rested her head against his chest, relaxing wistfully into his embrace. Isn't this rain just wonderful, Tobio? She murmured into the, his damp shirt. It brought you here. It brought you to me. Shh, he chided, stroking the rain-beaded strands of Wyan's hair away from her face. Just rest, Wyan. But I'm quite all right. I really am. You shouldn't worry about me, oh, I don't feel a thing at all. The numbness of the rain, it's quite the cure. Her lids flitted clo or weakly fluttered, and with all the strength she could muster, she craned her neck to steal one last glance at Kageyama. I think that her voice was hardly a whisper now. I was just a little bit in love with you, Kageyama Tobio. And with that, his savior had left him. Boom! That was actually really interesting. Um, I really like the words, and I actually read those fucking big words correctly, except for one of them, because, babe, I never heard of that before. Mm -mm, no, thank you. No, ma'am. No, sir. Like, I had never heard of that word before. But everything else, I think I did that pretty good. Um, as I said in the last video, I'm sorry for, like, the notifications don't go out today for some reason. So, um, hopefully that doesn't bother you guys. That was kind of depressing, but in a good way. So he's like a soldier for the Republic or something. That's that's really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, make sure you subscribe and tap the notification bell so you get notified every single time I post a video. That is really important. Notifications on for sure. If you like my content, that is very important to do. And also comment down below some other characters you want me to do. And if it's a rare character, I might not be able to do it because there's like no fan fiction for them. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, make sure you like this video too because that helps push up my videos and it is good for the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.